in our last episode we saw how a peace treaty was signed between the East India Company and Maharaja Dalip Singh to prevent further war though the treaty was able to restore peace in the northern lands temporarily it could not curb the underlying resentment among the sikhs a future uprising was inevitable as we saw earlier jindan kau was far sighted and she understood the company's intentions long back so she continued plotting an uprising in the lahore court from her exile hi this is kaushik mazumdar your host and in today's episode we will talk about the events that led to the second anglo sikh war now around january 1847 lord dalhousie took over as the governor general of india while some sikh generals and countries welcomed jindan's dismissal most of the others resented resident lawrence's action on 17th april 1848 two representatives of the company civil officer patrick agnew and lieutenant anderson arrived in multan to collect additional tax from diwan mulraj the ruler of multan the next day both of them were brutally murdered within a few days the sikh army joined in open rebellion against the company prudent dalhousie perceived the scale of the insurgency and realized that immediate confrontation with the sikhs would be foolish instead he resolved on strengthening the company's forces till winter and to weaken the insurgency by that time along with the military commander in chief sir who goff dalhousie was considering not merely the capture of multan but the entire subjugation of punjab maharani chindan kaur her faithful attendant gongaram and sikh general khan singh were convicted of conspiracy the queen was deported to varanasi and her annual pension was reduced from 1.5 lakh nanak shahis to only 12000 all her precious treasures were confiscated and the rest of her followers were publicly hanged the very incident enraged the patriotic khalsa soldiers the entire sikh empire felt utterly humiliated by this disrespect from the company towards their rajmata juvenal dolip singh helplessly witnessed his mother exiled soon after the sikh chiefs of the lahore court took dolip singh's marriage proposal with the daughter of sardar chhatar singh the governor of hazara to the resident the resident turned down the proposal sardar chhatar singh felt utterly humiliated and pledged to defend the independence of punjab with his last drop of blood he expressed his desire to revolt against his son shet singh shet singh agreed and from peshwar to afghanistan the revolting sikhs rose to the occasion and resulted in widespread revolt across punjab and the second anglo sikh war broke out though lieutenant herbert edwards the british political agent in banu was near multan in april he was unable to save civil servant van sagnew he hastily levied about 5000 irregular pashtun troops and on 18 june 1848 Herbert confronted 8000 of Diwan Mulraj's army at the battle of Keniyari on the banks of the Chenab river but Herbert was unable to capture the fortified Multan due to a shortage of troops general goff greeted the news with relief since this apparent victory further delayed the outbreak of general revolt he was still unprepared and did not want to send british troops to southern punjab during that time of the year as it was india's hottest region now on 14th september shet singh rebelled though shet singh and mulraj did not join forces but mulraj agreed to supply funds from his treasury while shet singh moved north to join his forces with those of his father this was not immediately possible 
as Chhatar Singh's army was confined to Hazara by Muslim tribesmen fighting under British officers. Instead, Sher Singh began fortifying the crossings of the Chenab River, awaiting developments. Governor General Lord Dalhousie did not send troops until November. Even when the generals of the company incessantly kept requesting for a large army. On 22nd November, Gough ordered his cavalry, artillery and infantry brigade to move to the Chenab crossing near Ramnagur. The Sikhs occupied strong positions on both banks of the river. Initially, the British drove some Sikhs back across the river, but then the concealed Sikh batteries opened fire. Gough's horse artillery was outgunned and forced to retire. Sher Singh sent 3,000 horsemen across the fords to take advantage of the British check. Gough ordered his main cavalry to attack them and was hit by heavy artillery fire causing heavy casualties. Colonel William Havelock and his leading troopers were surrounded and cut down. Brigadier Charles was killed by musket fire at the Battle of Ramnagar. Shed Singh's army used every advantage of ground and preparation and resisted the British attack by General Gobbs' forces. In 1849, Muhammad Khan of Afghanistan sided with the rebellious Sheikhs and his 3,500 cavalry forces captured the fort of Attack by defeating General Nicholson's army. This allowed Chhattar Singh to move out of Hazara and marched forward intending to join forces with Sher Singh. Dalhousie had earlier ordered Goff to halt operations while waiting for Multan to fall. Learning of the fall of Attak, he ordered Goff to destroy Sher Singh's army before Chhattar Singh could join him. Goff unexpectedly encountered Sher Singh's army near the Jhelum River on 13 January 1849. Sher Singh had cleverly concealed 10,000 strong armies and Goff was left with the choice of withdrawing or attacking late in the day. Goff unhesitatingly attacked around 3 pm and the resulting battle of Chilanwala was fiercely fought. Brigadier Pennyquick was killed trying to attack the Sikh guns head on. After almost every attack met with disaster and over thousand casualties, General Goff was forced to retreat as darkness was approaching. Sher Singh's army was also hit quite hard but marched forward to join Chhattar Singh, which made the battle into a strategic defeat for the British company. Meanwhile, a mighty artillery force led by General Wish captured the fort of Multan and Mulraj was imprisoned for the remaining of his life. Soon, the huge combined forces of General Wish, Goff, Harry and William started preparation for the final battle against the Sikhs. Finally, on 13 February in the Battle of Gujarat, after seven hours of heavy artillery shelling from 100 guns of the combined forces of the company mage to destroy 60 guns of the combined forces of Raja Chhattar Singh and Sher Singh, the history entrenchments of the Sikh army were all destroyed. There was desperate hand-to-hand -hand fighting for the small fortified villages. After the British had withdrawn at Chilanwala, Sikhs showed no mercy to the abandoned and wounded British combatant. Similarly, the British at Gujarat showed no mercy to surrendered or fleeing enemies. On 12th March, Chhattar Singh and General Sher Singh surrendered in Rawalpindi. The remaining 20,000 Sikh infantry laid down their arms with many of them exclaiming, Now Ranjit Singh is dead. The Afghan contingent withdrew through Atak and Peshwar. On 30th March, Maharaja Dalip Singh made his last appearance at the Lahore court. The day he signed away all demands to rule Punjab. Then Lord Dalhousie's declaration of the annexation of Punjab was read out in the court. Elated British army ensued, artillery firing from the Lahore fort. The Union flag flew over Ranjit Singh's palace. Dalip Singh came down from the throne. Ranjit Singh's Kohinoor 
was gifted to Queen Victoria to be a part of the British crown jewel. Ek roz sab lal ho jayega. The prophecy of late Maharaja Ranjit Singh finally turned out to be true. 1857 was still 8 years away when Punjab fell to become the first victim of Lord Dalhousie's omnipotent annexation policy. The day Dalip Singh was dethroned, he was only 10 years old and was not permitted to live anywhere in Punjab. He was sent from Lahore to Fatehgarh and put into the care of Dr. John Login. All his properties were confiscated and his annual pension was determined to be 1.2 lakh nanak shahis. In 1853, Dalip Singh was converted to Christianity. A year later, the company exiled him to England. Maharani Jhindan Kaur got to see her son again in Calcutta after 13 years of exile in an almost blind and mentally dilapidated state. After many desperate attempts by Dalip Singh, he could transport her mother to England. She died at the age of 48 after living abroad for the last few months of her life. History is apathetic and time? Time is remarkably ruthless. The valor of Sheikhs significantly impressed Lord Dalhousie. Immediately after the annexation of Punjab, the recruitment of Sheikh and Kashmiri youths to the company's regiments began. During the mutiny of 1857, these recruits fought on behalf of the company and they had little sympathy with the Hindu mutineers of the Bengal army. Because, ironically, this was the same Bengal regiment that fought for the British company and showed little to no mercy while killing a lot of Sikh men and boys during the Sikh war. After the conquest of Punjab, Dalhousie modified an old law to satisfy his omnipresent hunger. This is infamously known as the Doctrine of Lapse and his focus moved on to the Kingdom of Satara, the Satara of late Chhatraputi Shivaji. Want to learn more about the untold story of Indian freedom struggle? Keep listening. We got a page from episode notes and resources. Visit us at http colon forward slash forward slash www.ksproductionsusa.com Subscribe to the Revolution Untold Story of Indian Freedom Struggle at Apple, Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify or wherever you get your audio. Be sure to leave us a review, give us 5 stars and please talk about us to your friends and family. We want to hear directly from you too, so send us an email. Our email address is therevolution at ksproductionsusa.com The Revolution Untold Story of Indian Freedom Struggle is produced by KS Productions INC in collaboration with Pastel Entertainment. Our executive producers are Kaushik Mazumdar and Shushmita Mazumdar from KS Productions INC and Shaoli Mazumdar from Pastel Entertainment. Our researcher is Dipanjan Maithi, content developed by Dipanjan Maithi and Kaushik Mazumdar. Original music composed and designed by Shottajit Shem. Also use compositions by Kazi Nasrul Islam. Stay safe, stay healthy.